started here. We have him here. On Cursed Hollow on the left side. They are Team Oh, let me fix that. Team Refuse as the blue team on the left side here with Toxical playing ETC once again in the top lane. We have Arkham playing Malfurion, Godspeed playing Nazibo, Noisen playing Illidan and in the bot lane Konus playing Rhaegar. Their opponents in the red trunks, they are Mad Corpse with Jellic playing Lili and the quadruple stack Lonely is playing Tassadar in the mid lane down here we have STK on Uther, JP on Mrs. Vala, and last but not least Yuki playing Diablo. Alright, Konus seems to be uh, staying back here. So we'll have a look at the top lane up here, Illidan joining the fray here. So JP, uh, well, um, Jalik actually needs to stay back. But I think she's just going to play the safe, and I think she could actually stand her ground here and just stay safe, uh, heal, and get back. Get back, but uh, this is going to mean quite a bit of siege damage onto their lane. And how does it look down here in this, in the other party lane? Well, Konus looks like he can heal himself back up, and they're rotating up. Maybe going for a kill here on Toxical, but he's so laid back, he's way back on his side of the map, so I don't think it's gonna happen. Instead, gonna rotate up and help Lili. I mean, they're already doing some incredible siege damage here. Almost 4,000 damage. Ooh, Arkham getting pushed back! Can they do... Can they have a follow-up? Yeah, there's the overpower and Malfurion falls. Nice move, really good rotation. Good idea here by Mad Corpse. Go for that rotation and kind of uh, stop this onslaught on the top lane. Now it's Jellic by himself again. And ooh, they're waiting, waiting for the next move. But I think they saw him. And there comes the turnaround. Noisen needs to watch out. I mean, it was really deep in enemy territory. And they're still waiting down here. But now it's triple stack versus triple stack. That's not gonna do all that much. And they're coming in. Ooh, Noisen caught out once again. There's the overpower. And can they block, body block him? I think I think they can. JP going for it, and there comes the final blow. Really good move. Illidan go down, and the first two kills going for Mad Corpse. So far, they're playing this out quite well, just as expected. In the early game, kind of thought, okay, they have the upper hand, but they're also working this so well. Oh, Arkham with the overpower! Wow, Yuki really knows how to play as Diablo, and this is gonna give him quite the advantage to go for this tribute. Yeah, there's no way Godspeed can make it over here. And he might actually be in trouble. There comes the body block once again, overpower, but Noisen comes out to help, and this time they actually stay safe. But the tribute is up, and I don't think they can do all that much. SDK is just gonna channel and get it, even with the remainder of his team coming in to help out quite a bit more. So they have a solid level advantage now. Didn't ever lose out any XP, and even though uh, there was a little bit of a um, rotation coming out, JP just doing so well down here. Got rid of both towers and will soon get that uh, key at the gate as well. So really good pushing power out of Valor. Let's have a look here. Um, yeah, 18,000 siege damage. That is insane. Oh, Illidan. A little bit over Yiga up here. Let's have a look at the talents. Lili going for Cloud Serpent build. Uh, increased duration, um, more health for friendlies and the attack bounce. And a little bit of a different build on Valor as well. Hatred stacks. They're going for Rancor, for Manticore. So um, lots of stacking going on for Valor. Searing attacks taken as well. And that's the next tribute. Again, in a really good position for Mad Corpse. They're also waiting, setting up. SDK down there. Oh, I think Noisen and Konus might be in trouble. Going for it. Konus backing off, wisely so. And ooh, there's Toxical going straight for it. They're still quite a bit behind. They have their level 7 talents now, so that's one thing. But I don't think they're gonna stop this tribute. Nope, not gonna happen. Mad Corp's going for the second tribute in a row. Without all that much contest coming out. And even the steal on the boosters? Wow, that's a little bit ballsy. 
maybe Refuse can capitalize on it, but they only have two heroes in position. Now Noise is coming in from bottom. But yeah, it's not gonna happen in time. Bruises were stolen and unfortunately Refuse couldn't really do anything about it. And this is gonna give uh, that level 10 advantage to Mad Corpse if they really um, if they really just stick to their plan. And top lane is in trouble. Godspeed is the only one here. And they're rotating up. Oh, there comes the <laughs> there comes the push. But overpower a little bit too late, but still, wow. Nice move. STK going for the finishing blow there. And that gives them a lot of time to get rid of these towers, get rid of the wall, and then go straight for that fort. Even though I don't think they're gonna get it here. But hey, I mean they have level tens. Uh, let's see what they're going for. Jug of a thousand cups on Lily, Rain of Vengeance on Vala. Divine Storm on Uther, Apocalypse taken by Diablo, and there we have the Archon for Tassadar. So he's gonna rely on Apocalypse to stop uh, Nazibo, which I think is a solid option. Oh, wanted to go for a steal on the boss, but that's not gonna happen. Uh, that would have been a little bit crazy. Maybe they can stop it before he gets into lane. And he is cursed. So that's all tributes pretty much taken for free. They're just gonna deal with this boss and send the remainder of their guys towards the forts, get rid of them. Um, maybe top, maybe they can get top fort as well. I mean, all the gates are down. They're sending Vela up there, but just by herself? Um, could be an issue. Well, as expected, uh, Ravenous Bird is taken by Nazibo. Metamorphosis on Elden, Tranquility uh, taken by Mr. Malfurion. We have Stage Dive for ETC and Ancestral Healing for Rhaegar. So pretty much as expected. Ooh, Mal is the only one up here defending, but we have the remainder of the team coming in. And they're about ready. Going for their boss now. I mean, it does or could actually work since the curse still lasts for another 15 seconds. And that gives them a little bit of headway to see when the fuse is coming for them. Oh, well, Konus thought about going for a steal. And Toxico coming in, but a little bit too late on that stage dive. And now they just have to back off. I think they will pretty much be able to. Ooh, great zombie wall there. But a little bit too late on the stage dive. This could have worked. Would have been a great move too. But now they're definitely gonna get that fort. Maybe push straight on through and try to go for the keep. But that's maybe stretching it a little bit here. Nevertheless, Sea Giant's taken. Uh, the boss will go for the keep. Maybe they're gonna help him out. Yeah, yeah, they will. Just make it a little bit faster. Get the most out of their boss. But it's already lost most of its HP. I don't think it's gonna do all that much anymore. Just gonna try to get all the damage they can. Sea Giants, uh, one of them is still up. So that's gonna help out a little bit here. Make this push a little bit stronger. But now with the boss in there, I think they can they can actually do something here. And ooh, ETC and Nazibo completely out of position. That was Arkham caught out by the great timing here by Konos once again. Great ancestral healing. But still they're pushing down on this keep. The boss does go down, but they still have the entire team up here. And I think it's gonna be enough. They're gonna get the keep. Nice early game advantage here for Mad Corps. Oh, Kona's caught out up there. And he's... Oh, there's a cooldown. Can't really do anything, but he does get away. ETC doesn't get away, though. No Ancestor healing this time. And Arkham with the overpower and a Shrink Ray. But he's frozen in position. Might have helped him here. Yes, I think he, he can get away. They're still active. Just now turning the round. 17 seconds on ETC. I think they can actually go for the next forward. They still have a little bit of time left. Oh, Knoisen. Single-handedly taking out a fort down there. But I think so might... Uh, so might refuse... Uh, so might Mad Corpse, but nope. Playing the safe way. Going for their bruisers. Let's have a look at the level 13 talents. We already saw the ice block in action from a Furion. Giant killer taken by both Illidan and Vala. So, um, really using that basic attack damage, uh, basic attack damage built on Vala. She also took Searing Attacks, of course, Reign of Vengeance, which we've already seen in action. We sprint on Nazibo and Uther, and down here, Uber Rockstar on ETC. 
And by the way, next tribute is up. Zero tributes so far for both teams. But looks like Mad Cop's really again in a perfect position to take this first one. Bonus coming in, but a little bit too late. Oh, nice, easy, free pickup for Jalik. Perfect move, just in time. And on there we have Feral Lunge once again on Rhaegar. Going for uh, increased, um, increased bonus attacks on this wolf. And the Shrink Ray, which we also saw in action back there on Malfurion. Ooh, siege damage, Illidan. <laughs> wow, he really did a good job pushing down that bot lane. Single-handedly going for 50,000, but so did Vala. 60,000. 60, that is quite a number. And wow, that that's a really fast second tribute. The other one was barely just taken. Level 16 talents are up. Let's check them out. Imposing presence twice on Uther and Diablo. Up there we have Blood for Blood on Vala and the Serpent Sidekick. So lots of Cloud Serpent uh, based skills on Lili. She also took the sh uh, Shrink Ray, so that's double Shrink Ray. And second strike by Tassadar. And that's the second free tribute and now they're even going for the boss. Wow, Refuse, they can't let this one slip. They have to stop him. But they're not even in position. Kona's just standing there. They seem to be paralyzed right now. Maybe going in for a nice stage dive to steal it. We'll have to see. There's the stage dive. He's coming down. Can he go for the steal? I think he might be able to, but... Ooh, Reign of Vengeance is doing so much. And he drops once again. Noise and healed back up. But he still drops out. And JP still in the middle of everything there. But SDK, he gets out. Noise and drops incredibly low. He falls. Arkham will also fall. And there's the overpower onto Konos. I don't think he can get away either. Oh, one more hit. One more hit. Oh, jeez. I think he can actually get away. What an escape here by Konus. And even if he doesn't get away, he's buying him, his team a little bit of time. Otherwise, uh, I think they might die already. Mid fort is still up, but bottom keep will fall here, that's for sure. They have the seed shines, they have the boss pushing, and now everyone else is joining in. And that keep is surely about to go down. Meanwhile, Diablo going for the final tribute, and that's. That's the boss, that's the Siege Giants and an entire team with a 2 level advantage and that really important level 16 advantage and the curse at the same time. That is insanity and Mad Corpse, they're gonna capitalize on it. Go for the fort and then just turn around, go for the last keep and maybe even kill him off straight away. But the entire team off refuses back in here, so still have a word to say about this. Mad Cops are just mad, they're just pushing through. They're gonna get this next keep as well, I, I think. I mean, the curse is still up for another 30 seconds. It's gonna give him a massive advantage in dealing with this keep. So far? Not really sure. Still trying to back off, get at least get rid of these walls. Have a little bit of a safer escape route. And there we go. Going for that keep, it's gonna fall. They have just way too much damage output. Another Oracle is popped, and... So does the keep. Oh, there's the overpower of the Godspeed. And does he have a second overpower? Nope, not yet. Excessive healing coming in, keeping Godspeed alive. Toxical drops low and does fall here. CC um, did not do all that much. And there's the Jug of the Thousand Cups, keeping everyone alive. Noise and counter and everything. And he drops down. So does Sarkim. And now only Kona is remaining up there. Nazibo is still around somewhere. Oh, nope. He drops as well. And Rhaegar is the only one left alive. This is surely going to be game. And Mad Corps move on into the semi-finals in a very convincing fashion. I thought this game was over in the draft phase, but hell, Mad Corps really showed me. And showed Refuse. Wow. They really, really played out that early, early game advantage. And never, uh, never gave Refuse a chance to get their team composition going in a strong suit.